Hello, and welcome to a two-parter of Hearts of Within. Uh, my name is Lowell, pronouns he, him, and uh, I am the designer and co-writer with Joyce Cheng of the Hearts of Within book. And uh, uh, I had a request on the Gauntlet game request channel, and I love running the game. So I, I've set that up to, to do this. Uh, so uh, I'm going to be talking for a little bit doing the the setup for all of this, the, the cats that we do to introduce. Today, we're gonna to be doing character creation, uh, and uh, then we're going to be doing some introductions, uh, entanglement building, and then we're gonna be getting to play. Typically, that sort of uh, character creation and then entanglements and all of that is anywhere from an hour to 90 minutes. Uh, we'll try and take a break uh, at the hour, if we're, if we're in the flow of things, maybe at the, the midpoint, I usually try to take two breaks if we can. Uh, that's the, the general procedure that I go through. So I am going to get started here. So this is Hearts of Wulin, uh, and this is a game where you're going to be playing martial heroes. Uh, our touchstones for this are Crouching Higer, uh, Hidden Dragon, Hero, but in particular because we're using some of the supernatural playbook elements today, our touchstones are the Untamed, uh, Bride with White Hair, uh, Painted Skin, uh, even Tai Chi Master, recent very spectacle high CG film. Uh, but those are all of the kinds of touchstones. Uh, this is a fantastic version of Classical China. You as Wulin heroes exist slightly outside of the normal world. Uh, you're outside of the common folk and imperial authority. You have your own uh, factions and groups and clans and things like that. Your characters have extraordinary abilities, extraordinary powers, skills, uh, but you are caught up by your own heart. You are characters that speak obliquely about feelings, about emotions. You try to, to deal with that. Now, this particular genre and the sort of basis for it comes out of martial arts novels, primarily from the 50s and 60s by uh, Gu Long and Jin Yong. Uh, in China, there was an earlier tradition of martial novels, but these serialized novels really set the template for what meant to be wuxia. Uh, and then were adapted into multiple TV series with many, many episodes. Uh, and that's how I came to this, is watching some of those uh, translated Chinese long form dramas, and I love them. Uh, multiple characters, heartbreak, fighting sequences, this is all very much my jam, which is the, the why we're playing uh, this particular game. So that's sort of the, the concept. The specific concept for our setting is your heroes, you will know one another at the start, there is a wedding that is uniting two warring factions that you're going to. We'll figure out the reasons for that. Uh, but there's a supernatural threat that has hit other marriages and weddings recently, the shark finger princess. Who, what she is, is uncertain. That we'll maybe find that out in play, may come up with that in entanglements. We'll, we'll discover that. But that is the sort of threat that is out there. Uh, so our aim is uh, uh, and approach is that we're going to be doing character creation. Uh, we're going to be making some choices about you. mean, naming your style, identifying that, uh, coming with the character. You'll be choosing a playbook. Uh, and within the playbook, there are three roles. You'll choose one of those roles, and that will give you a move. And then you can also choose one or two more moves. Uh, if you decide to, you can like hold off and choose your second move in play or choose both of them in play, however you want to do that, whatever you're most uh, comfortable with. Our stats are elements. Uh, they represent feelings, they represent emotions, how you're doing something. They're like approaches in fate accelerated or the states from the veil. Uh, you'll make that choice. Generally, you get to choose, except you will have an element for your fighting style and you always roll that when you fight. But when you have inner conflict, when you're trying to deal with your own emotions, you can't roll your fighting style element. So. That's that's how things go in this. Uh, after we get our characters sort of basically set, we'll do introductions and then we'll build entanglements. You're each going to have two entanglements, a romantic entanglement and a general entanglement. Entanglements are triangles. They're your relationship with one person complicated by a second person. 
And generally in a one shot, uh, I encourage you that you get at least one PC in one of those, those four slots when we go to do that. There is a tab called Entanglements and Names uh, in the Keeper, which has some curated entanglements for the different playbooks. Uh, if you want to take a look at those, there's also a bigger list at the bottom. Uh, and there's also example names, uh, male, uh, female, uh, and also martial or honor names. So if you need a reference point, those are all there on that tab. Uh, and then we'll get playing. Uh, there isn't a plot. Uh, this is all about your characters and melodrama. We'll set up scenes. We'll get initial uh, inciting incidents, and then we'll play to see what happens. Uh, in terms of the tone, this is a melodrama. Uh, it is emotions that are heightened, reactions that are heightened. Uh, uh, we have characters that try to maintain their facade. It is serious but not grim. Tone can change rapidly from one scene to another. You might be laughing and drinking with your, your companions in one scene and then cradling your dead lover in another. Uh, there are elements of the genre that uh, we see throughout, like the fact that if you wear a disguise, uh, no one can see through it. Uh, that is that is one of the, the genre conventions. These are all things that go into this. Uh, I want to make uh, a, a sort of a reference to the idea that, that we are playing with uh, a set of tropes and genres, conventions, and ideas that come from foreign culture. I am super white, as you may have noticed. Uh, uh, and uh, I am a, a foreigner to this culture, but I, I love and appreciate, we wanna treat this genre with respect as much as possible. We want to avoid any kind of parody. Uh, we wanna really uh, embrace what it does well. Uh, as, a, as a side note to that, uh, and I know you all know this, but I'm just, I always say this, uh, we can do voices, but we don't do accents when we uh, play in this kind of genre. Uh, now, uh, safety is the S in the cats that I do. And we play with a layered set of safety tools, which I know all of you are familiar with, I'm, I'm certain. Uh, we have in the character keeper lines and veils and then ask first. Uh, during the character creation process, I'd ask that you take a look at that uh, and add in anything or mark anything that you want to have a hard line on. We don't want to see that at the table at all, even a reference to it. A veil meaning that it either fades to black or it's going to be handed off screen or we alight it if it comes up in play. And then ask first being something that you're okay with, but you'd like to have a check in before we get to that, before we bring that to the table. Uh, so uh, mark those. Uh, I always. Uh, mark uh, torture by the PCs as a, a hard line for myself. Uh, but go ahead and do that. If there's something that you want to add, you can do that down at the bottom. Before we get to introductions, I'll go through the lines and see what everyone has chosen. This is also a document that can change uh, over play. So that's our first uh, safety tool. Our second safety tool is the fact that we will be using the X card. Uh, you can do that by saying X card. You can do the, the gesture. We use X card for uh, content that is problematic, that is objectionable, uh, that is wildly off tone, uh, uh, or even place that is aggressive. We can X card to kind of stop and recalibrate on that. A good place to keep in mind the the X cards use is maybe we're playing along, and we've established a line, but it looks like we're leaning towards that. That's a good time to X card and say, hey. You know, maybe want to, to to back away from that. Whatever you X card, you don't have to defend your decision. Don't have to explain your decision. It is your choice. We accept that. The only question we might ask is like, how far back do you want us to to cut? How how much do you want to to step away and and reset? That's the only thing. Uh, the other thing about X card is if the first couple of times something comes up and you're like, I'm cool with it, and then at some point you're not. Uh, it is legit to X card it later. You've not lost the opportunity. The opportunity is always there for you to do that. Uh, and then the last uh, uh, safety tool that we have is we always have the, the open door policy, which means if you need to step away for whatever reason, uh, uh, personal, physical, whatever, you should do that. There's no explanation necessary. Uh, if you can tell us if you're going to be back, that'd be great, but that's not, you don't have to do that. Uh, with that, 
the open door also policy also applies in this way. If we get done with this session, you're like, wow, that is not the game I thought it was, or that's, that's the game I want to play. You don't have to come back. Uh, you should never feel like you're stuck in a game that you're not enjoying. That's all part of the open door policy. The last thing I'll say is sometimes I talk too fast. Uh, and sometimes my Hoosier Midwest accent gets in the way, like when I say settler or root. Uh, if at some point you cannot understand what I'm saying, please ask me to repeat myself. I have no problem with that. Just, just be aware. Sorry to interrupt. What was that second word you said? That was root, root, root. Root. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no context. Yep. Thank there you. we go. Oh, yeah. Uh, so uh, the other thing that I'll mention is we do have on the uh, safety tab a romance matrix, basically where you can say if you're cool with romance with NPCs, if you're cool with romance with PCs, uh, uh, or, uh, or ask first. Uh, uh, there, ask for sort of trumping the other ones uh, in in some way. So uh, just uh, uh, think about uh, your comfort level with that. All right. So I'm going to find out exactly what playbooks people have chosen. We're going to get that set. We're going to get people working in the character keeper. Uh, and I'll talk about exactly what steps we're going to get to and how we're going to do that. So uh, I'll do or uh, sort of order of arrival. Uh, Jay, uh, have you thought about what it is you would like to do in terms of your playbook? I think I'm going Monster Hunter. Okay, all right. I think that's where I'm at. I think that's a, that is a fine choice. Uh, so the Monster Hunter is the loyal, what was that? No, it's the, uh, it's a Bravo playbook. Uh, so yes. uh, the, the, the lively playbook, uh, that sounds great. That sounds awesome. Amanda, what are you thinking? I think I would like to be an outsider, a wanderer. Okay, that is a, a great thing. Uh, we'll make sure you tap me when we arrive at places, like when we first arrive at the wedding, we'll make sure we do that role that is there. And maybe if we if you go to another location within there, that's a good time to, to hit uh, that. Sounds uh, good. Uh, Jason, what are you thinking? Um, I'm still thinking about, I, I think I want to do the hidden unorthodox. Okay. I think that's a, a great, great pick. Uh, and, uh, Devin. I would really like to play, uh, the student playbook, the exorcist. Awesome. Awesome. See, this is great. Oftentimes when I do this, I have to have people go, well, I've got these three I'm thinking about. And then we do this. We have to go around a couple of times. Uh, so. The character creation tab, there's a tab that walks through the steps that you're going to be working through there, uh, which means you know, choose your look and name. You can drop a, a picture uh, in the keeper if you want. Choose your column on that, that character keeper tab. You're going to come up with a fighting style. The only thing we need to know about your fighting style is what it's called, what element it's associated with, and what kinds of weapon or weapons you use. Uh, you'll assign your stats. It's a plus two, uh, plus one, plus one, zero, minus one. Uh, and you'll pick your moves. Uh, and so go ahead and do that. And if you have any questions about what things mean, uh, hit me up. I'm going to sit here awkwardly while you do that. And when we're done with that, we will go to introductions. Sound okay? Okay. All right, I'm going to pause the recording at this point so people don't have to watch me sit here. <laughs> so uh, for those of you watching or listening, I may just skip over character interest. You'll, you will pick that up in the breach as it were. Uh, but uh, I want to go over what our lines and veils are that we have uh, established so far, just so we're on the same page. Uh, so the things we have hard lines on established by our players at this point are homophobia uh, and sexual assault and torture by the PCs. Those things are off the table. And then veils on any kind of uh, harm to, to animals. Uh, so we're going to put that, uh, uh, allied that if that occurs. Uh, I think that's a good one. It's an unfortunate trope of a lot of the, the wuxia stuff is, is, is harm to animals uh, uh, that, that I, I have a real issue with. Uh, but uh, we've got those out there. 
as our, our set of, of safety tools to consider. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go around with each character, and I'm going to have you pick whether you want to tell me about your general or your romantic. Again, uh, uh, each one of these has two slots in it, uh, and I'd like you to have a PC in at least one of those, and that's one of those things that we'll check in and improve and get everybody's uh, agreement on when we uh, get those offers out there. We'll have you do one, we'll go around, and then we'll have you do the other one. So, Withering Ash, would you like to start with your general entanglement or your romantic entanglement? That is you, Devin. So, so sorry. No, no. I would like to start with my romantic <laughs> entanglement. All right. Uh, so do you, do you know what you kind of want to want to play with here? Uh, yeah, actually, uh, I was just uh, finishing up uh, that. So um, I was looking through uh, your NPC section and I found someone in F39 that I figured Withering Ash would be really into. Um, so uh, uh, her name is Razor Eyes. Razor Eyes I? Mm -hmm. um, so I love Razor Eyes I, but my master... Uh, Wu Ma Yen uh, suspects their fam her uh, her family of hiding a dark secret. All right, uh, and uh, so you have a a, a name there, uh, Wu Ma Yen. Do you want yes, to put I, that to a, to a particular picture? Or do you have a picture for it? I put it in it? Uh, B ninety six in B96. Uh, oh. NPCs. Okay, uh, uh, excellent uh, uh, classic uh, return. Uh, yeah, that's I love Al Young. I just yeah. love him. Yeah. Uh, so this is the master who uh, uh, trained you in your art as, a, as, as an exorcist. Yeah. And how do you think you met Razor Eyes Eye? I think um, uh, clearly she's a, a warrior of some kind. So I think there was a, um, uh, a haunting in a barracks. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so we were we were called there, uh, and then during uh, it it uh, uh, during the uh, exorcism in true like epic fashion, um, uh, uh, there the the barracks was also being raided. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, they met uh, their eyes met over the battlefield, and it's just like, hi, who are you? So uh, something of a mutual response and a mutual attraction yeah um we'll find out and play what that, that dark secret might be that that is uh being suspected uh uh so we'll we'll make sure when we get to your other one the general you'll want to have a, a pc uh in one of those uh entanglements mm -hmm. uh let's come uh next to uh you Bo. Do you want to do your romantic or your general? Let's talk my general first. Okay. Oh, this involves some BC run by. Um, Auntie Oak, uh, you had mentioned that you had also been away for quite some time. Um, so the general entanglement that I'm offering is that Auntie Oak knows my secret and threatens to tell my friend Righteous Jade who will not understand that I've why I've deceived them? So you would have information from way back before I became this. Um, I like that. Yeah. Uh, why wouldn't righteous Jade understand? If they're a, your friend, it's a major show of distrust to basically um, the way I'm seeing it is if um, let's say I work for uh, I am part of the bride's family quote unquote mm -hmm. um, to suddenly learn that this entire time um, you have someone has been keeping a watchful eye on the relationship in a very dangerous potential way I, I think that would cause intense conflict in a situation like this especially with two previously warring uh, factions. That seems, that seems fair. Uh, uh, 
Uh, do you think, I mean, given your ages, uh, is Righteous Jade around your age, younger? What do you think? Well, Righteous Jade would be younger. Okay. Um, they're again they are just the the groom of the situation okay. they are the um so, so, so more of an uncle mm -hmm. uh yeah. that kind of uh relationship okay okay uh and righteous jade we've got uh uh he him i do want to uh, swing back because i forgot to ask this uh uh devin uh the pronouns for uh raise your eyes i are we doing she her for those yeah, she, her. okay i just want to make sure on that before we move forward uh Next, let's come to Amanda. Amanda, romantic or general first? Um, oh man, they're all really good. <laughs> right? <laughs> I was hoping that it was going to take longer to get to me. <laughs> oh, goodness. I think I am going to do... Stalling, stalling, stalling. <laughs> nice. Um, do you want me to come back to you? <laughs> yeah, do, maybe. Do you, do, let, let's do J and I'm then we'll come back to you. I'm okay? read, just done reading through them. <laughs> oh, that's fair. Thanks. Uh, J, would you yes. like to do your romantic or your general? Oh romantic okay uh all right so i'm gonna throw this out here but we can change it i'm okay with changing it i disguise myself to get close to pale cricket but auntie oak their lover suspects and hates me Yeah, I'll go with that. Okay. You sure? Yeah. And uh, I have not decided. Um, so you can pick uh, Pale Cricket's uh, gender. I'm, I'm indifferent. Um, let's go through the MC or NPCs and find yeah. somebody. And, and feel free to change names uh, if we haven't established someone. Yes. I'm just looking for the person that looks like pale cricket. It's got to be somebody pale. Probably wearing green. Well, this person is pale and they have a green thing. So let's go with uh, F88. Does that seem okay? F88. Pale cricket. She, her. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, that's perfect. Uh, and do you think this is a more recent thing or a, a long term? Uh, what's the what's the reciprocals on on that? For for Ren for you, for, for for Ren in in connection to 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 Pale Cricket. Uh, I have been following Pale Cricket through her last two reincarnations. Okay. Because that sounds cool. I don't know. I like it. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, go ahead and uh, put Pale Cricket's name and pronouns in there uh, on the, the, the tab for that. Okay. Uh, Amanda, we return to you. General okay. or romantic? I'm going to go with romantic. Okay. I'm going to say that, ooh, hold on, I have to find an NPC, that's cool. I, ooh, here we go, here we go. I mistakenly declared my love to Pale Cricket, who I thought was Magistrate's son, and now confusion abounds. All right. <laughs> that's awesome. So, and Pale Cricket, I, I assume reciprocated and re responded uh, uh, favorably to that that offer. Yeah, uh, it's confusing. Okay. <laughs> uh, Working out though. Magistrate's son. A great outfit, yes. 
Awesome. So we'll come back to you on your general entanglement. Uh, that uh, brings us back uh, to you, Devin. Uh, and let's get the other one on the table here. Okay, so I definitely have a, a, a pitch. Okay. Um, I was looking in um, Loyal General, and I kind of want to steal one of their generals, and I'm going to pitch. Literally anyone can grab this. Okay. I have hidden that my sworn brother, uh, my elder, one of my two elder brothers uh, in, in the Witch Hunter, uh, uh, or no, sorry, not Witch Hunter, Exorcist okay. uh, plan. Uh, their inattention caused the tragedy which haunts PC. Anybody interested in Any having takers? that? Any takers? Because I have another one if, if that doesn't grab anybody. Could you, could you say that again? I have hidden the fact that my sworn brother... Uh, their inattention caused the tragedy that haunts insert PC's name here or contributed to the tragedy that haunts um, insert uh, PC's name here. If not, I have another one. That would, I mean, so I, I could put myself out there because that would give a good reason for why there was a shift in belief of, well, styling and why I wanted to hide away for so long. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but now I have to think about what this tragedy is. <laughs> what um, What is your sworn brother's name? Do we have a, a, a which I, NPC we want to go with here? I kind of liked uh, Wanderer. Uh, was it Wanderer Boo? Wanderer Bow. Wanderer Bow. Okay. That seems fair. Uh, so go ahead and, and uh, he him for Wanderer Bow. Yeah. Okay, go ahead and mark that in and uh, maybe put a little bit about in the notes about that connection just so we can remember that. Uh, and we are going to swing back to you, uh, Jason. What do you want for your other entanglement? Yeah, so for the romantic entanglement, I was thinking of um, uh, I love Peerless Zalan, but their duty to donning joy draws them away. Uh, Peerless Zalan being one of uh, the, the, the teacher for the bride. So their um, duty in teaching her and being focused on everything going on has caused distance and disinterest. And and do you think it's, it's dawning to all you're imagining this as somebody who is like needs that help or demands that help? How are you imagining that that sort of picturing that character there? That's a great question because now I'm thinking about someone else's autonomy. Um, <laughs> I I have the feeling that Peerless is a bit overbearing a bit. Um, I feel like they probably, or she puts herself too much into it. I feel like there is a little bit of resentment from Donning Joy of like, get out of my life. Like I, I got this, I am part of this family that's successful like I can do th these things but um I think there's definitely a little bit of tension between the the teacher uh pupil relationship there okay I think that is excellent uh Jay what do you want for your second entanglement uh <clears throat> I think, here we go. I think I found it. Uh, hang on here. So I think that Withering Ash and, where's my entanglement? Yeah, Withering Ash and I both seek revenge against somebody. I will find somebody. But I must be the one to strike the killing blow. <laughs> you good with that withering ash love it okay love it uh especially because it's the exorcist of the monster uh, yes. uh together mm -hmm. they fight crime 
Uh, yes, we so fight yeah, crime. It. Yeah. Uh, it is the ninth raven. Ninth raven. Ninth okay. raven. Yes. It is the ninth raven. I love this stuff. Okay. That so works. Excited. Uh, last but not least, Auntie Oak. What what is it to, to you want to do for your other entanglement? There's a few in here that say um things along the lines of my parent X abandoned me to be raised by Y and now they've returned. I would like to reword that to be the parent. Oh yeah. Auntie Oak is the parent of one of the PCs. Ooh. And they don't know this, I think, but she does. It's one of those things that she, as soon as she saw them, she remembered. Well, it has to be Yubo or uh... Uh, uh, withering ash. Withering ash, yeah. Uh, <laughs> unless Ren Jin took on the form of of your your late child and. Uh, oh, and I think it's my child, but it's not. You yeah, yeah, you yeah. already you already have this this antagonistic relationship <laughs> already. I suppose. I suppose. This. I mean, it's it is a lot of soap opera. Oh yeah. 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 So that would mean that. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. To, if to get... <laughs> is my is my child, or so I think, that means that they disguise themselves as right. my son to get close to Pale Cricket. Right. Who and, and... I, the mother, am in a relationship with. Mistakenly. And, and, yeah, and, and they is... don't realize that you're not like actually right. attached to pale cricket and of course they don't yeah. know that you think they're the the, the child right and i can see that because my thought is if i'm changing shapes i just took a shape yeah there's a dead guy nobody's gonna know that he's dead i'm gonna just take this body and i'm good to go right love it i love it it's so drama let's let's that's go delicious. with that that's that's wondrous <laughs> all right so we've got the entanglements out there we are going to take our, our break here. Uh, I usually take 10 for that first uh, uh, break. Uh, yeah. Depending on how we go, we may not get a second break. Uh, we're going to come back. I'm uh, going to set up some scenes, hard frame uh, into this, get us on the road and uh, see where we get to. Uh, so I am going to pause the recording again and attempt to remember when I return. Uh, so a couple uh, logistical things before we get uh, moving on, there is a rolling room present. Uh, roll with me uh, there on the uh, Lines and Veils tab. Uh, you're welcome to use that. You're also welcome to roll your own dice at home uh, if you're more comfortable with that either way. Uh, a couple of mechanical things about the way uh, this runs. Uh, inner conflict is the move I'll be calling. If you come face to face with the emotional weight of your entanglements, or you're torn by other choices or emotional issues. That is the that is the one that we roll. It's a reactive move. You always get to mark XP when you roll that move. So there's your bonus uh, right there. Uh, uh, number two, uh, foes can be below your scale, in which case you're going to dispatch them very easily. They can be on your scale, in which case there's a challenge. If you fight a foe that is above your scale, you lose. There are ways to even that scale. That's that's how that works. So one of the moves we have is study. That's our information gathering move. One of the things you can do is determine a person's scale. So if you want to know before you go in, you can do that. The other important point about study is a little bit different than other PBTA games is we don't have a question list. Uh, you can ask a question about a person. You can ask a question about a scene, about a place whatever we'll kind of figure out how how you know that but the other thing that you can spend the hold that you get from study on is you can declare a detail you can establish something present in the scene uh the the the, the classic moment in the very the very first play test was when and fraser revealed that in fact his sister who is an npc had in fact studied with the same poison master that he had that was a detail he added in boom Okay, that's the story we're going with now. 
Uh, so you always have that that option to kind of uh, uh, do that that shift, uh, as you will. Um, it's a little bit like when you ask a question, you kind of know the answer you want. You're actually answering the question yourself in some ways. So. Withering Ash, uh, where is this wedding taking place? Uh, is this uh, in the heart of a, a city? Is it on uh, an estate? Is it in a forest? Is it on a mountain? Is it on a lake? Where, where is this wedding happening? I, I am, <clears throat> I imagine it takes place um, on someone's estate in their backyard where they have like a nice little uh, uh, garden. Okay. Like a, a little uh, fountain, a, a pond with fish. Yeah. You know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, uh, a kind of sprawling uh, estate with the, the wings, the big garden. Uh, there's a pagoda uh, at some point out there uh, for people to, to meet under the moonlight. Uh, uh, that, that seems right. Uh, uh, Ren Jin, uh, is this estate the estate of the bride's family? The groom's family, or someone else. Uh, keeping in mind that the, that we know these two factions were at war. Um, I think it's the groom's family. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, and what is the name of the groom's family's sect? What do you what or clan or group? What do you want to call them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me jump over here to your names. Uh. Oof. but I like the way it looks. So I cannot pronounce it. I will okay. copy it into the chat. All right. I will not attempt it, but I like the way it looks. Is that the, I think that's the family name. Does that work? Is that yeah. good? So, so Shiun, we'll Shiun? Say, I'm, I'm going to say that quite badly, but that's that, uh, the, so the Shiun family. Okay. Yes. Okay. The Shiun, say Shiun clan. Shiun. All right. I like it. Okay. Uh, and this is that it's their estate uh, yes. that they this is that we are meeting at. Uh, so uh, you, Bo, uh, you are friends with the groom's family, right? Like that, that that's uh, they trust me like anyone else of the my like, family. Okay. Uh, what is unique? about this estate that this wedding is being held on? What's unusual or unique about it? I think that what's unique about this, uh, so we said it's like an estate, right? It's kind mm -hmm. of like a large kind of sprawling area, era, area. Um, Lots of balconies, that sort of wide, open, beautiful space, room for people to, to sneak from, from place to place, but there's some, some concealed rooms and things. I think that there is, um, I think they grow a special kind of tree here. I think they, the, 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 the family really values, um, I almost want to say it's like a ginkgo biloba tree. It looks kind of like that, that like bright yellow, beautiful flower of the ginkgo. Um, is it magical? Let's say it's magical. Okay. What, what is it? Is it is it that it's made into something uh, or does it have a particular property? What do you think? <clears throat> There is um, a tradition that suggests that a, um, a tea made from these leaves gives you the ability to kind of peer beyond the veil. That, right. I like that. Uh, Auntie Oak, I see in the chat you've said that perhaps the, the son that you abandoned, uh, you left with the, the family of the bride. Uh, what it, like, what is the, the name of that family or clan or group or sect 
that that you left them with? Great question. I think let's go with they are the um hmm, yin clan the yin clan okay something nice and classic uh simple yeah classic and i won't horribly mispronounce it and upset anyone so you left your child with the Yin clan years ago. Uh, and I'm, a, I'm guessing, given that you said you were away for a while, like you have had no, no idea. You don't know what's happened to them. You haven't seen them, uh, uh, anything like that, right? It's possible that I don't even remember them until I see Renjin. Okay. Uh, so, we, so, yeah. Uh, so, so you haven't seen him uh, 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 before this, uh, at least in this particular uh, guise. Uh, I think that seems fair. Uh, I do want to make sure I have one thing. So we've got to get that. that da, 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 da. Ninth Raven. Okay, which is the picture for Ninth Raven? Uh, Magic, I just want to get that. I may have moved some things around here. Uh, Jay, did you have one? You are muted, or at least I can't hear you. Oh, you're right. I have two mute buttons. Sorry okay. about that. That's okay. I don't have one. If you do, I'm open to suggestions. Otherwise, I'm scrolling through the NPC tab uh, now. Uh, I would suggest for a particularly sinister figure, uh, H77. H seventy seven. Yeah, I lit. I literally just found it. <laughs> okay. How about I'm that? in? Let's do okay. it. Yes. All right. So I'm going to drop that in here, and we'll do ninth raven. Oh yeah, I like it. Okay. So, uh, classic spring. Everything's blooming. Flowers. Uh, uh, we, we see the the colors, the trees, the petals are 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 floating down. Uh, and what has drawn you to this wedding, Wish Withering Ash? Like, why have you come? I mean, we know that that the Shark Finger Princess has attacked these other weddings. Is is that the only reason? Is that what's drawn you here? Or is there something else? I. Th I think I think he's using uh, his profession um, to, as a as an excuse to be at the wedding with Razor Eyes, uh, who is stationed. Okay. So he's going. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, there's a lot of. Uh, oh, absolutely. I am here to make sure that uh, that this goes off without a hitch. It's very important. And, but he's really just like, and maybe I'll have lunch with Razor Eyes Eye one time and we can look at each other from across the table and wish that we had different lives. Uh, and a similar question, Ren Jin, what, what is it that is drawn you here? Is it Pale oh, yeah. Cricket? Yeah, no, no. It's Withering Ash. He's full of monkey poo. I okay. know he's here because uh, Ninth Raven is here and I'm following him because I got to get Ninth Raven first. So I don't think he's being straight with me. I think, uh, so I follow him. What's We come when, together. When, when we, we, we don't maybe get the words or see that, but like what's the sequence we see on screen of, mm -hmm. of Ninth Raven? Like like we know that they're, they're the, a, a villain in your life. Like what do we see? I think I think he's tied to uh, my first me taking over uh, Rinjin's body, right? So maybe uh, Ninth Raven knows, right, that uh, I'm I'm not the body I'm in, right? Absolutely, because he killed that person. Yes, absolutely. Yes, yes I like it. Yes. All right. Uh so uh, uh, 
wrench in like where where do you cross paths with withering ash you've probably gotten there ahead so so what do we see so i think uh i knew he wasn't doing whatever he said he was going to be doing this weekend and i just assumed he was hunting ninth raven i don't know if he's here or not so i follow him here okay uh and once i figure out this is the place uh, i think as he's coming up uh, maybe there's a, a grand walkway to the garden, right? I'm sitting along the side with my fan and I'm waiting for him. Yeah. Let, let's say that 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 there's that sort of stage to state. You're 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 uh, arriving in and spring, maybe a little bit of twilight. So the 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 sun is sort of setting. Uh, withering ash. Uh, when is the last time you saw Ren Jin? I think uh, I, I I had the impression that it was like the odd couple, just like we both have this mission, mm -hmm. um, uh, and and like we have begrudgingly helped the other uh, right. out of a scrape, uh, even though we don't like each other because we know the chances of finding them together uh, is better than each of us alone. Right. Um. I feel like this is I feel like this is the second time that the two of them have gone their separate ways and I feel like the last words we said uh were uh were a fancier version of uh oh yeah but for real this time. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I'm in. Uh, uh, and then and then uh, I'm just going, uh, my mind is not at all on Ninth Raven for a bit. I'm like, no, this is fine. You know, I'm, I'm doing my own thing and I'm going to this wedding. And then you are on the way to the wedding. Yes. Yeah. They're perfect. When, when you see Renjin sitting there, fan out, clearly waiting, clearly having been, you know, they got their fan out, they, they wave it and then do that quick shot of it to to signal what what's uh what's your reaction um i think i think it's like a a tongue in cheek scoff and oh i see i see that they're just letting anyone in nice Ranjin? You didn't bring your plus one. It's just you. <laughs> I, uh, I, uh, I come on official business. I come on official business. I'm, I'm not a guest. I don't I have I don't have time to put my feet up uh, and and be with the fancy people. <laughs> I have work to do. Well, you could be my plus one. Mm, does that mean I, I get dinner? Well, yeah, I'm a guest. Well, if dinner's involved, and then when I kill Ninth Raven, you can watch, take notes. I'm gonna cut there. <laughs> <laughs> on I a good line. So Cut on a good line. I love this so much. <laughs> you both, you're returning back. You said that you haven't been here for a while, but you're returning back uh, uh, a little bit like uh, Auntie Oak. Uh, but like, what has drawn you back? Is it just the wedding or is there something else that that has pulled you to come to return back for this well um i've not completely i, I have not receded away from the um i'm sorry the yin family uh, i have been together with the yin family for some time now um there uh the bride's father um which we have not named um mm -hmm. think about that for a second um <clears throat> But the bride's father has uh, kept me around as a sort of protector, as we talked about. Um, 
So there's a couple of reasons I've come today. Uh, for one, uh, these were originally warring factions and the father, though happy for his daughter and seeing the potential that this, this, mar this marriage can bring the families together into some form of union is still very on edge and does not, and is completely uncertain whether or not this will actually help the family. Uh, you have the supernatural threat that I don't think Yubo takes very seriously. I think Yubo is more worried about the physical things that are happening around him. Um, I think he's just kind of dismissive of it. Um, and of course, uh, I'm also here to continue being close to um, uh, Peerless, uh, to stay close to her as she kind of wrangles everyone together. Uh, so I'm just here to make everyone in a good mood, keep everyone happy, and just make sure that nothing goes wrong. <laughs> yeah, well, well acquainted with both sides, mm -hmm. uh, uh, connected to, to both sides. There, It's absolutely a per perfect why you would, would come here. And Auntie Oak, why have you come? There's some sort of supernatural pull back to this place that I've I've left so long ago. Just that feeling of knowing that you need to be at a place at a specific time, a very uh, kind of old, old power. Of course, I've got pale cricket to worry about, um, my, my lover, and she's, it'll be fine, you know, magistrate son who I actually love is in, in this town. Mm -hmm. And of course, I abandoned my son to be raised by the bride's family. Uh, but you know, when, when you have a, that sort of gut instinct, you got to follow it. Uh, uh, Pale Cricket is expecting you? Yes. Uh, uh, and has it been a while since you, you've seen her? Have, have you drawn that out? Probably a few months. Okay. Um, she was hoping I would be, I, I would see her sooner. She was visiting a town close to where I was, but I conveniently was not able to uh, visit, unfortunately, for her. Um, but she's a very impressionable young woman and one of those people that has a little bit of an old soul, but is gets into trouble a lot. Not necessarily of her yeah. own doing. You Bo, uh, you have been traveling. Uh, there are a couple of roads that take you up to the estate. You're heading close to a crossroads. Uh, uh, we can kind of see the same scenery as we've seen in that last scene. Um, and then there's a shadow that, a shadow of your past that, that, steps into view as you see Auntie Oak step onto the road, clearly ahead of you, heading the, the same direction. She's seen you. What do you do? I think there is a very, um, I think he was in conversation with someone he was traveling with at the time. Um, he tends to try to fill space with uh, laughter and chatter. And I think that's what we see as that initial kind of traveling is happening. Um, but then I think he sees Auntie Oak um, and they, there's that kind of like quiet that washes over him. Uh, you hear everyone is still kind of chatting around him. Um, but he's grown silent and he is keeping eye contact. Uh, he reaches to his hip and he pulls out a flask and he takes a small sip while maintaining eye contact and puts it down, puts it back to his belt. And 
keeping eyes on her, looks back to continue the conversation to try to ignore her existence, but trying to like, you will watch as his eyes dart back to see what she was doing. Auntie Oak, you know this secret. How important is it to you, this secret of you, Bo? How, how important is he in your calculations of, of the world? I don't know what it is that's drawn me back here necessarily. All I know is that I had a very strong instinct. I need to be back in this town. And what a surprise. What a surprise to see Yubo right there. As he goes and reaches for his flask, Auntie Oak reaches for her hip as well, grips her hand around the wooden sword and waits. He, he, he ignores you. He tries to ignore you. You can tell it's, it's not a very good job of it, but he's trying not to, not to speak with you or, or acknowledge you. Auntie Oak is a patient woman. She's not interested in starting a battle unnecessarily, starting a situation unnecessarily without having all of the details. Hand on her sword, obviously, especially since he is staring her down as best he can. She slowly walks by him in his group, shuffling her pack on her bag or her bag on her back uh, ever so slightly as she walks by, also not breaking eye contact. Nice. So there's a there's a, a tension there as as the, the, the pair of you move forward. Uh, you will see up ahead on the crossroads that heads up that there are a set of carts that have overturned. Uh, and you'll see some some laborers trying to to right them uh, and uh, get them uh, uh Back on the road, there, uh, the 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 tarp covered goods back in. Um, what do you do, Auntie Oak, when you see that? For a moment, she considers not stopping. For a moment, but maybe this, maybe this is one of the things she needs to be here for. Might as well take advantage of the situation in case it is, and possibly make some connections. If not. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, as you walk up, you're going to offer to assist these these people? I don't think I even offer. Auntie Oak shug, shrugs her bag off of her shoulders, makes sure she tucks her swords in so that they stay safe. And using the age old abilities of, of 1,000 distant hills, she ducks down underneath the cart and Jean Valjean's it up. You right, and and as you approach it, the, these people are trying to, to wave you off as you do that, and there'll kind of be a clatter as it comes down. But you get the first of these carts righted, and I think that's the point at which you, Bo, you will see as as Auntie O gets it set that the uh, the tarp on the back shifts, and you will see that there are coffins stacked in the back of this cart. What do you do? Mm. So it's been righted, right? Yeah, there are two of these carts that they were knocked over, tarps on them. Antioch with superhuman uh, 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 ability has, has lifted it, righted it up. These people are, are trying to wave Antioch off. Um, you described, so <clears throat> just trying to get a thought here. Sure. Absolutely. So, so Yubo's group was kind of walking along the road or traveling. Yeah. Uh, and Auntie Oaks comes is, it's a little ahead. This yeah. happens. Um, we probably pause for a moment, watch this kind of ruckus happen. And we see as these, um, 
these coffins are revealed to us. Um, I think Yubo shares a quick moment of like, that's weird. Um, he wants to not, doesn't want to put himself in the situation yet, but mm -hmm. I think he's thrown off by the people like saying, no, 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 don't help, don't help. And I think he wants to try to see if he can figure out a, um, a reason behind that, if he can read their kind of, how they that, feel. That feels like study. Uh, let's go to the moves. What element would you like to roll study with? One second here, my Zoom is being wild. Sorry. All right. Um, I think that, uh, I think just due to, um, I think the thought behind, uh, he's curious about the situation. Mm -hmm. He's trying to not interject before he needs to. He's trying to be very patient. I think it's going to be with wood. Okay. Uh, so go ahead and roll with wood. Uh, so let's see, 2d6 plus 1. Uh, so 2d6, 3 plus 1 is a 4. So that is, um, yeah. So uh, I think that uh, uh, as you approach you'll see one of the figures that's standing there sees you and your group and the, 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 the tradesmen who were kind of hunting and he turns and he looks at you and he raises and his eyes glow and you find yourself just a, a, a cold terror goes across you and you find yourself frozen in place. Uh, go ahead and mark wood uh, and uh, your companions beside you also freeze paralyzed by this gaze. So now I bring my other two uh, uh, characters onto the scene. Uh, up ahead uh, at this crossroads, you will see uh, Ren Jin and uh, uh, it's going to take me a bit to get everybody's names. Withering Ash. Uh, uh, you will see this this scene: the, the, the uh, a pair of carts that were knocked over, and then this woman who both of you will recognize, well, sorry, uh, one of you will recognize, I don't think, Renjin knows who Auntie uh, uh, Oak is. Uh, we'll see her write this cart. Uh, but then you'll see this, this other group that's kind of frozen in place. What, what do you do? Withering Ash? You are muted. I am muted. Pardon me. I think this is a, a study. I think okay. I need to assess the situation. Absolutely. I would love another hard move to put on my hard move shelf. So what do you want to roll it with? Uh, <laughs> I think uh, Earth, I mean, caution, focus, presence, right? Yeah. Like what's, uh, I'm, I'm kind of thinking like, what's the biggest threat, even though I know that's not what we're doing. Uh, it's kind of still what my brain is. Perfect. Doing. Let's have you roll. Uh, that would be a seven. Seven. So you've got one hold to ask about scale, to ask a question, to establish a fact. What do you want to do? Um, I think I would like to establish that okay. the I think I'd like to establish that the group is on their heels. They weren't expecting to be discovered. And they yeah. are. Yeah. Uh, and in fact, you see one of the other people, as the two of you start to approach, uh, shouts something to this leader person, uh, uh, drawing attention. Uh, and they look as if they were waiting for you two or at least one of you, uh, and they seem like they're they're suddenly in in tumult here. Uh, does that seem fair? Okay. Uh, 
And Jin, what do you do? Uh, I see that uh, Withering Ash, I had to check to make sure I had that right. Withering yeah. Ash is distracted. And so I say to him, my friend, I clap. Hey, stay with me. Let's go. We got to check in. We got to get our clothes together. Uh, we got to be ready for the festivities. Um, so I'm, I, I want him to, to stay with me and walk along this path and let's go. Forget about that. They have that under control. That's not about us. I, I believe it is about us. And if it's not, I'm about to make it about us. And then I'll just, uh, you, can, you can keep following me if you'd like. <laughs> right, and right. then I will watch. <laughs> okay. he, he could head off, but he, he starts striding forward. Do you, do you stay with him, Ren? Uh, I wait? think I stay and watch. Okay. Yes, I wait. I stay and watch. <laughs> right. Auntie Oak, I think that the moment you've got this cart righted, uh, uh, the, the tarp falls a, a, bit, a bit away and you see these coffins stacked in there, somewhat odd, uh, uh, but sort of over the shoulder, or sorry, over the cart, you can see uh, uh, withering ash, who you're familiar with, and another person who you can't quite make out in the twilight, you can't quite see their features, uh, <laughs> uh, 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 approaching here. But you definitely got a sense that there's something weird here. What do you want to do? This could, I'm taking stock of the situation, this could very easily just be a cart for a funeral home of some such, Certainly. perhaps. I don't want to jump to any conclusions. Does it look like, since the cart had been uh, disheveled, does it look like the coffins have bodies in them or if they're just empty oh no but the weight the shift they definitely something in these coffins i think i will turn and look at the people who were in this group telling me to not help and give them a good once over uh you will see that they've they've moved their hands uh, uh blades have been revealed uh, their attention is on the approaching two figures, uh, and you can tell that they mean no good to anyone. I don't want to get in the middle of a turf fight. It's not really my business. Goodness, goodness, goodness. That's, I think that I'm sounds going like to... a coward talking. Oh. <laughs> 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 I think. Um, Antioch turns to whoever looks like the leader of this group, mob, whatever this is now, mm -hmm. and says, is this uh, local trouble? He turns to you, probably breaking some eye contact with you, Bo, and says, ah, it's too late for you. You should have left already. And you'll hear a cracking and these coffins in the back of this cart and the other cart will break open and you will see these figures, ghastly pale, the talismans on their faces, they, they leap out uh, and they're a group, uh, they, they, they're Jiangxi, maybe not hopping vampires, but they're definitely the undead, uh, summon forth this group of them uh, uh, breaks out. I'll come back to you in just one second. You Bo, uh, 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 this demon eyed, uh, figure breaks eye contact with you. And then there's this splintering. And now we've got this group of troops, some sort of sorcerer leader, uh, uh, Auntie Oak is surrounded by these undead that have burst forward, uh, uh, and uh, you see Withering Ash and another person approaching down the, the, the road. Withering Ash has definitely picked up speed. Uh, your companions who are with you let out shrieks uh, uh, and begin to run. Uh, they are not made of the kind of serious metal that you are. What do you do? 
I think as all you watch, like all the companions scatter like behind me and run, I think Yubo is kind of left there. Just it, it seems almost comical that it's just Yubo left alone against this sort of horde <laughs> that's appeared. Um, <clears throat> I think he once again, um, I don't think he ever fully took the flask out of his hand. Mm -hmm. And I think he takes another sip as he slowly starts approaching. Um, yeah. Now, it seems like there's a lot of trouble here that we're trying to cause, my friends. Uh, there's a very important event today, and I really would appreciate it if you did not interrupt said event. So if we could just, you know, walk away from all this, I would greatly appreciate it. This whole time, just trying to get as close as physically possible to be in the center of everything. Let's have you make a, a overcome role to kind of do this in uh, to, to fly casual, as it were, to, to get up there uh, into the position that you want, to kind of mm -hmm. close the distance without them dispatching foes to intercept you. Mm -hmm. What do you want to roll that with? Um, I think this is going to be a water roll. I think okay. keeping awareness of everything going on around him and being ready to move at any moment. Um, that's his whole, whole shtick. So we will take a look here. Seven plus two, that's a nine. That is a nine. So uh, I think you get up there. Uh, uh, but let us say that that uh, they very clearly are not marking you as 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 nothing. They they clearly mark your stance, your 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 movement, your uh, not running, uh, and some of these these hench folk. Uh, move in your direction, but uh, you've closed the distance. You're closer by Auntie Oak, uh, but you are are a threat. Withering Ash. Now there are Zhangxi, the undead that have burst forth, uh, confirming your suspicions. What do you want to do? You are muted. I know I'm muted. Uh, <laughs> does Auntie Oak look like she's armed? Oh, yes. I, I, right. Auntie Oak is, is always armed, correct, Auntie Oak? Okay. Um, uh, yeah. I think I think he, uh, I think at this, this is the point where he will uh, go, oh, I see. Uh, and then he'll put his mask on and he'll just hurl his spear because he, that's better than just dropping it. Like, well, mm -hmm. like, uh, this isn't this isn't the weapon I actually want and throw it and then he'll get it and then just like it's time I guess like oh there are actual and I think he's trying to impress the uh, the the people to give up quickly and not to actually like fight just like you guys can call this off at any point right so so that feels to me we've got some humans who are troops here uh, uh, so that feels like you're trying to deal with troops, like you're trying sure. to, to get them, uh, out of the way. Uh, and so the, let's say that there's one group that's kind of moved towards, uh, uh, bow and the other one that's kind of moved towards where you're at. Uh, so go ahead and roll with your, your, uh, fighting element. Uh, all right. Fighting element is fire. Oh, that's a 10. That's a 10. I think these troops had no idea what was in these coffins. Okay. Uh, uh, and they see that, and and suddenly the exorcist comes out. You've got these weapons, and the the group that's closest to you, they they flee in all directions. They clear out. Renjin, what do you do? Right now, threats on the table. Uh, a couple of sets of these these undead that are are shambling and moving. Some of them moving towards your position. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, these troops that are by Ubo. Uh, and a uh, person who seems to be the, the leader. Um, I protect myself first, okay. but I'm also kind of looking out for Withering Ash's back to make okay. sure he's okay, right? So uh, I'm not trying to get in and mix it up one-on-one, -on -one, but I will cover Withering Ash's back to make sure he's not surprised. Okay, uh, so we'll say that you move up, uh, follow behind, uh, and... 
uh, we'll give you the opportunity for a comforted supporter to take action here when the, 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 the scene would be triggered. Auntie Oak, uh, what do you do? These, these undead uh, nearby you, some of them close by, some of them heading towards where withering ash is. Uh, what do you do? What is this cart connected to? What's what's pulling it? Uh, let's say uh, that uh, there are a pair of oxen. Okay. I think... I imagine they're sort of mad-eyed at this point, given the, yeah. the undead having popped out. Yeah, I think uh, Antioch pulls out her small steel blade and the wooden one, but she has the steel one in her dominant hand right now and slices through the reins, connecting the oxen to the cart, um, letting out a, a big yell to encourage the oxen to run, trample. You know, there's more of them than there are of us. So if anyone's going to get hurt, it'll probably be not us. Yeah, let's, uh, so let's do overcome to kind of change the environment. Uh, and, and let's see what that looks like. What do you want to roll that with? Um, I think I just want to probably be metal. Okay. Control calculation, trying to watch this this chessboard of pieces moving around and of course i said the one that i have zero in but that's okay sure that's a four that is a four so uh i think as you cut uh these oxen free they do rush and and uh, send you flying backwards uh uh, into the into the dirt there. They do take off, getting themselves to safety. But I think as you look up, you are surrounded by four of these Yangshi. Uh, I want you to mark an element. Uh, uh, they are grabbing at, at you, trying to get that blade away from you, surrounding you, clearly wanting to make you one of them. Could I use my special move and mark an element uh, instead of of uh, Auntie Oak and get a bond with with her? One hundred percent. What's that called? Uh, Book of Heroes. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. uh, which element do you want to mark? I think. Uh, let's say. It's just the curse. Let's say wood. Okay. And what does that look like? Like, what do we see happen that is you with your, your skills, your talents sort of interceding a bit to, to, to uh, help Auntie Oak to keep these things from, from clawing at her? Oh, uh, well, I'm, uh, I've got my, uh, my uh, meteor hammers, so I could um, whip and like literally, oh yeah, I'll whip them out uh, uh, as long as they can go, and they'll each wrap around two hands that are like going right for, her, and I'll grab them and pull them right back. Perfect. They 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 go out absurdly far distance, and then and they're 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 pulled back away, and and the area is cleared around from you, Auntie Oak. You bow. Uh, what do you want to do? It's now gotten fairly violent has gotten fairly violent and I am here to make sure things do not continue staying violent. Uh, I think Yubo, um, I, originally where he was trying to, you know, approach one of the, the humans in the situation and trying to deescalate, uh, knowing that they have run off and all this chaos is sort of starting to buckle around. I think he kind of shrugs a bit. Well, can't reason with the undead, I guess. Um, <clears throat> and I think what I would like to have Yubo do is I think Yubo reaches in on his other side and he has a match mm -hmm. and I think he swigs some back strikes it and <sighs> blows fire at a group of undead okay uh so this is you uh uh taking on this group of of undead uh are you trying to do that or are you just trying to disrupt them what's is it reading his attack or setting I, something I up want, i want 
to end this combat as quickly as possible. That's he wants it to stop. All and right. he, he know you he knows you cannot reason with undead. Absolutely. That's his belief. So he wants to just end it. Kill Perfect. Him. Uh so uh when you roll against a foe who's a superior scale, go ahead and roll. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where this is going. <laughs> it was a wait, is it with combat style? Yeah. Still just a six. Still just a six. So those flames rush out and it catches their clothing on fire. But these four Zhangxi, now a flame, rush at you. Uh, and they put their hands on you and they begin dragging you down. And as they drag, they start to sink you into the ground. Your feet actually go into the earth itself. Or they, like they're clearly trying to bury you in the, the dirt. So uh, mark an element. Um, do I have to mark combat elements? Well, so because you rolled with the combat element this time, especially with a hard move on this against a foe, you do have to mark uh, that combat element. I think it is that your feet are trapped limiting your uh, efficacy here at this point uh withering ash you've rescued auntie oak uh, uh but you see this you see uh you Bo, like he he is getting shorter by the moment that's not that's not good um i'm gonna have to help him i think um and uh, I think I will I will establish this since now you've seen them kind of in action. You know that as a group, these are, four yeah. together, like there are two of these groups, they're above your scale. You something needs to be done to disrupt them, move them apart, or do something to lower their scale. Take one on one, mm -hmm. one against the four of them is not going to work. Right. Um, I'm going to uh Yeah, I think I need to. I think I need to separate them, right? Okay. Um. So if I could, maybe I'll. Um. Oh, uh, are there any like trees or like can I get higher ground in any way in this setting? Sure. What kind of trees are here? Um, let's say, I mean, we've oak and ash already. Um. Let's say willow. Uh, okay, willow. Uh, Some beautiful willow trees planted along the road here. They're in full blossom. Beautiful here. Okay, uh, and what I'd like to do is, um, uh, yeah, what I'd like to do is uh, leap up onto the branch mm -hmm. and try and um, pull it down. Um, to pull enough of the tree down to like actually create some kind of physical barrier in between. Perfect. So uh, I'm going to have you roll overcome. Okay. Uh, this is the, and the effect is to lower the scale of the ones that are on you, Bo. Let's have you roll. Okay. And that, uh, any particular. You can uh, roll with whatever you would element, like. Huh? <laughs> I mean, oh, I would, I, I'd say wood, but uh, that's because I'm using the wood, but that's the one that I've uh, uh, marked. Let's yeah. say with uh, water, because flexibility. Okay. Right? Ooh, that is a six. That's six. Now, here's a mechanic that we have in play. You have bonds. You can burn mm. a bond to give yourself a plus one after you roll. Right. Basically... It isn't like you're using it up. It's that that you're calling on that connection that you have with someone here. With you, Bo. I actually have a bond with you, Bo, yeah, because exactly. I feel guilty about what happens to him. Uh, so what does it look like when you when you knock them apart? And how is it that you are hurt? Because I am going to have you mark an element of your choice as yeah. a cost here. Um What if, yeah, like I, I just, I look, I look at him and he's just like, oh no, I can't, my family cannot let him down again. So I bring that down and then I land badly. Mm -hmm. I land under the branches and I kind of twist my ankle a little bit. 
Perfect. Perfect. Ren Jin, you see this. You see this situation happening. Uh, Withering Ash leaps into the fray. Yu Bo is, is in trouble. Uh, Antioch is, is just getting herself up. Uh, uh, and it's there's some serious threats here. Yes, yes, yes. But this group, they're, they're split now, right? Yes. I, yes. So the group that is furthest away from anyone else, right? Because I'm about mm -hmm. to do a thing I don't want Withering Ash to see. Sure. Uh, and I don't want Yubo to see, right? But I definitely want uh, these creatures to see, right? Okay. Um, I will uh, approach that group and I will uh, strip away my mask to reveal my baleful visage. Interesting. Uh, yeah, let's 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 have that. Let's do that role uh, mm -hmm. and, as a way to dis disrupt them uh, right. and 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 break their scale up as well. Okay. Okay. I like it. Yeah. Yes. Uh, what do you want to roll that with? Uh, metal, because I think I'm being I'm calculating. I'm being in control, reserved. Sure. Uh, meticulous about this, right? Yeah, a 10 plus is a success. A seven to nine means that someone is going to see at uh, least a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, let me, I'm gonna jump over here to the, roll with me, 2d6 plus one. Yeah. And there it is. Oh no, oh no, that's not me. Where am I at? Oh no, that is me. No! What is your roll? Is that a four? That's really a four. That's awful. I think that you go to approach and you feel that sorcerer, clearly the commander of this, as you yeah. step, like, like move up, he slaps you on the back and you'll feel the talisman he puts on your back. Uh, uh, and you'll feel the strength start to ebb from you and you'll crash to the ground. Uh, I don't think the others see that it's a talisman that has done this to you, but you will see that Auntie Oak, this figure that has rushed up to save you, crashes to the ground, clearly hit by some baleful energy, and they turn to look at you and you see their face. <laughs> and you recognize it. <laughs> what do you do, Auntie Oak? I think I have some inner conflict. Yeah, I think so. This what is you... normally I can fight through anything, you know, just, but this is, this so, is different. Mark XP, and what do you want to roll inner conflict with? I would like to roll inner conflict conflict with water awareness wisdom flexibility that seems that seems good i'm gonna try the dice roller and see if maybe that'll do better <laughs> yay <laughs> I didn't fail it. <laughs> so, uh, so you got a, a, a seven? What, what'd you get? Nine. Nine. So that's great. Now, you could mark a bond and take that to a 10. Then you wouldn't oh. have to mark an element. You could stand strong in the face of this. I'm going to. I'm going to mark a bond with uh, Renjin, my the, son. Yeah. How do we see, like, like what, what happens? How do we know that you've, you've pulled yourself together here? What do you do? I think... Auntie Oak is, is pulling herself back up off the ground, you know, the, the wooden sword driving into the ground to help push her up. She is not a spring chicken. And she looks up and she sees this face that she's never seen before, really, but recognizes with her whole being. And honestly, for a moment, she's just frozen. The camera sees, you know, her her frozen and leaves falling down from withering ash up in the trees, falling in slow motion around her as she stares in complete shock. And after a moment, 
things speed back up to normal. The sound of rushing water through her, her ears um, brings her back. And she blinks and pulls out her sword, ready to, ready to fight yeah. alongside her light. son. Yeah, uh, step up uh, uh, where he is next to on the ground. Uh, these Yangshi are kind of turn uh, to, to, to now kind of surround you and him. Uh, the other group, though, that is divided, let's come uh, back uh, to uh, 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 to Yubo. Yubo, you've been given some space here. The the branches that the that the tree has been used by withering ash to kind of divide them. Do you want to concentrate on escape? Do you want to try and deal with these figures? What is the goal? I think Yubo at this point um, recognizes that his attempts at being very coy in all of this has not been working out. And I think he knows his place now is to, to help continue keeping the idea that he is not this grand combatant. Uh, he was just merely trying to stop it. Um, I think he's going to try to escape from this. I think he's going to try to roll out or like tumble away over like a tree as he tries to separate himself as far as possible from this uh, situation that's happening. Okay. Uh, uh, let's have you roll overcome. Yeah. Um, we're going to do this with, I think it's going to be fire. Okay. Uh, focusing on the speed and like kind of the creativity of getting out of the moment. Um, so it's going to be plus one. It is a 12 plus one. So you, you can withdraw uh, uh, easily, get yourself to safety in a steady position. Uh, and it looks more strategic than cowardly. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I think that uh, you move with a, a certain degree of caution, some hesitation there, but you get yourself free from uh, the, the earth and, and pull back away. And you're certainly faster than these things. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they're still split because some of them will be still trying to come after you. Um, but uh, you can move and you've got a, a good line of sight on things. Sound good? That uh, sounds great to me. Okay. Uh, withering Ash. What do you want to do? I think it is now time to do my exorcist move. Okay. Um, to create a barrier to expel or bar a supernatural spirit. That These would count, correct? Absolutely. Uh, you've got two groups of them. So I think right now you're barring. You could, you could drive off the ones that you've already split. Or you could try and drive off the ones that are surrounding Auntie Oak and Renjin. Those ones. Okay. Uh, then let's have you make that roll. Uh, are what they, do you want to roll they, it with? Are they of a higher scale? Uh, I think because you're using uh, exorcist palettes rather than the physical thing, I'm going to say they're on your scale. And that feels, okay. feels right to me. All right. Uh, I'm going to go with Earth. I think that's where I get most of my protection uh, ideas from. Okay. Um, let's see what I can do with this. That is a 10. That nice. is a 10. What does that look like? Like, what do we see? What's the barrier that that you call? What is What do we see on screen? So there's a different... Metal is metal. Earth is like rock and dirt, correct? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I would like to imagine that, um, uh, I do like, uh, a, a slight, like a uh, slight magic and like say, a uh, a, a, a prayer, mm -hmm. uh, a Buddhist prayer, and then just go like that in front of me and a giant, like, um, what would be under the earth at that point? Like sandstone, like a sandstone yeah. like, shift and there's a barrier now. Yeah, C cracks open, drives them back. The the force of the clean earth pushing back their unclean bodies uh, uh, and uh, driving them away from Antioch. Uh, Antioch Ranch in a, a spectacular display of of power uh, from from withering ash. Uh, Ranjin, 
what do you do though you're still on the, the ground there's this barrier that has driven back these undead what do you do so it's just me and auntie oak on this yeah. side of the barrier auntie oak who's staring at you who you've never met but is staring at you with right. with, with intensity right so i uh yeah so i kind of roll over my back right and i'm kind of relaxed and i look up at her and i say hey you okay you all right she reaches out a hand to help you up stone-faced uh-huh uh i take her hand and i i get up and i help her up and i'm like what and i see your sword it's obvious you 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 have some fighting capability and i say hey we gotta help. Oh, yeah, he's. Yeah, no, he's my friend. Yeah, we gotta help my friend. <laughs> she. Would you help my friend? She just continues to stare at yeah, you yeah. Like, with <laughs> unsettling intensity, and, and I think uh-huh, she juts her sorry. chin towards withering ash, saying, "You lead." <laughs> and and I think the 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 attitude of Rinjin is that, well, of course you're staring me at me like this because i'm beautiful right yeah and and you're just taken in with all my beauty and that's why you're staring and it's okay it's all gonna be all right let's go help my friend uh, uh how do you want to deal with this we've got two groups of these these undead who are just dis- disrupted one forced back by the barrier uh the other one that is split that was chasing you Bo. uh what do you want to do renjin um Man, I don't know. I don't know that I'm. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, so I think I'm. I'm. Go ahead. Oh no, no. You said you were going to help your friend. Yeah, so I think that's what I. I do. I want to get close to. I know that this is his sphere. This is his wheelhouse. So I want to get there, and using my blades, I will. I will buy him the space. And the time he needs, uh, I think he's the guy to fix this problem. I don't know that I have that 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 skill, that specialty, okay. but I think I can buy him space and time. So I want to do that. So let's have you let's have you roll. I think we're going to have you roll dual because I think Withering Ash has already kind of set this up. Uh-huh. You've got Auntie Oak potentially backing you up. Let, okay. Let's see what that looks like with the duel with someone on your scale here with this group. Cool. I'm good with that. Da, 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 da. Uh, basic moves, duel. What am I? So I get to pick the element. For well, duel. you would, except this is a fighting thing. Oh, so no. This roll is with my style. style yes. Yes, 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 yes. And my style element is. What is it? Metal. What is it? It's metal. So that's plus two. Okay. Uh, plus one. Right. It's plus one. Yeah, you took your water. Oh, yeah, no, you're right. You're right. Yes, it's plus one. Yes, I know. I remember because I asked that question about. Yes. And here we go. Oh, no. It's a six. Auntie Oak, would you like to aid this this person? Of course. Whatever he needs. (laughs) Absolutely. So you don't have a bond right away with Ren Jin, so you can't just spend that to aid them, but you can make the comfort and support role. Yeah, I would love to do that. I'm just going to look it up. <laughs> oh, it's just uh, when you assist a fellow PC role. All right, all right. I think, um, how, how is Ren Jin stepping into this, this conflict, stepping into this duel? What does it look like? Yeah, yeah, so I think, yeah, I think he's got, if I've got a, I don't want to say unlimited, but if, if I've got some um, space with what my blades are, I mm-hmm. think um, his preference is to have what Wolverine style. So he holds them in his hand three at a time, right? And uses them like claws because as his bird form, right, he's got talons. So I think that's what he does, right? Uh, but if he has to, he can throw them right oh nice um but i think that's what he does right that's this is uncharacteristic to be in this close fighting like this 
uh, very uh, obvious, very in your face. That is not his way. Um, and, and, and obviously that's not working out for him. Right. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, Auntie Oak, uh, what do you want to roll this with? What is, what does your assistance look like? I think what this is going to look like is going to be with, this is actually going to be with fire. Okay. Because you can't tell, but she is acting a lot more, um, recklessly and impassioned than she normally would. She wouldn't normally just jump into a duel so quickly, so Mm -hmm. without thought. So she shifts herself and she switches her hands so the wood sword is in her dominant hand and she jumps into the fray, so to speak. Let's have you roll. Let's see how it goes. Oh wait, what's my fire? Oh, my fire is zero. Oh, yay. So I rolled a five. So that is a five. So <laughs> tell me, what is the, the wound that you take putting yourself out there to give Renjin that plus one? Like, what is the, wow. the, the, the injury you suffer? How do these beings fight? Do they have claws? They have teeth? Uh, oh, oh, the sort of uh, uh, they their their uh, claws have grown after they died, and then they're blackened, uh, uh, and that's what they are are uh, attacking with. Gross! I love it. Okay, um, I think yeah, she gets up and she switches her hand so that her steel blade is in her non-dominant hand and her wood blade is in her dominant hand because she does not want to kill anything with her steel blade. And these beings, she expects one or two, but a number of them come upon her instead. She thought they would be definitely distracted, but no, no, they, they just come right for her. And I think she just gets claws to the the face, to the shoulders, nothing enough, nothing fatal, mm-hmm. but enough to hurt. Yeah, mark that element, and and it, it is not a good look. Uh, the blood is everywhere. Uh, uh, you you look an absolute mess here. Uh, but Renjin, you're able to with anti oaks more distraction than anything. We're right. able to to get these things dispatched, caught between that barrier that uh, that Ash has put up and your claws. Seem fair? That seems fair. I like it. Okay. Uh, so I come back to you uh, uh, there, and we're going to get names again. Uh, uh, Yubo, you've, you've gotten some distance. You see that there's... The, this tumult of, of withering ash and Renjin and anti oak, uh, the blood on anti oak, uh, 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 the these undead cut down. There are another set of them that are sort of scattered, and that figure that was kind of commanding things uh, is essentially moving to vanish off uh, uh, into the darkness here. <laughs> what do you how want to do? Dare you? How dare you? Um. So. <laughs> so the way things are kind of laid out on the field. Yeah. Uh, how many? It's, how it's, many groups are still alive? So here's the thing: is you've got sort of three choices. Mm-hmm. You could go off after the sorcerer. You could try and deal with these undead that are wandering and perhaps causing collateral damage. Uh, uh, or you could go and, and intercede in that fight. You see a, a anti-oak bloodied and and that, that tumult is over there. That's sort of the three directions I see. Yeah. That's Those were the three directions I saw. Uh, is, <laughs> is Auntie Oak surrounded by things or has she been just hurt and separated? What do you think? What do you think you look like right now, Auntie Oak? I think she's a little bit blinded by blood and isn't completely sure of what is around her. Um, 
I think she's sort of like half circle surrounded. Not so surrounded that, you know, it's a monkey in the middle situation, but mm -hmm. yeah. With that, um, I think you Bo would take note of the mysterious figure, but I don't think you Bo would not in his current state chase after this unknown assailant. Um, his goal now is to actually pull Auntie Oak away from what's happening, um, seeing that she's in a bad spot. And he wants to, his goal is to basically have a very quick private exchange in the middle of all of this. Sure. That, uh, that's what so let's do comfort and support because uh, essentially trying to, to, to help Auntie Oak out. Let's see what that looks like. Uh, and we'll, we'll we'll get to the the narration of it. What do you want to roll that with? Like as you charge charge forward. Um, sorry, that was a motorbike outside that I think you just heard. Um, <sighs> it's gonna have to be fire again. All okay. about speed. All about like knowing that he's fast uh, playing back again to he's faster than them mm -hmm. um so hopefully that overwhelming them in the speed is enough to get her out okay so 2d6 plus one that is a nine okay could wait mm, well so a nine will get auntie oak clear mm -hmm. and auntie oak can either give you a bond with her that, that you can then spend later to assist or on your own, or you can ask, let Auntie Oak clear an element. So I actually also, I already have a bond with Auntie Oak and I'm wondering if I could spend the bond here just to bump it to a 10. Yeah. And then that lets both of us clear a uh, mark. I like it. And, and, and what does that look like? And what do you, what is the exchange with Auntie Oak as you pull her back? Um, you Bo from his position kind of outside of this sees that Auntie Oak is being that like that half circle is kind of coming at her and I think for a second you watch as he kind of darts behind a couple of trees kind of getting around this, the behind her and he notices that she's wiping blood out of her eyes that she's not able to fully comprehend what's happening here um, so he comes behind her pull like grabs a shoulder real quick. What is what is Auntie Oak's initial reaction to this? I should ask because I just grabbed your shoulder. I think she it hurts, but lots of stuff's hurt her in the past. So I think she just cringes and grits her teeth through it. She thinks it's her son saving her. I think that you feel the hand grab you and it spins you around like he you bow grabs you and tries to spin you around and puts you on the other side of him for a moment and he locks eye contact with you even through the bloodied eyes you can see uh his face and he looks at you and says you've done enough here you should leave you're not welcome here Auntie Oak leans forward and she's smallish, but she's always a lot stronger than she seems. And I think she grabs Yubo's arm on, on his, this, the forearm really hard. Not hard enough to hurt him, but hard enough to know that she means business. And she looks up at him because she's rather short and says, I am not going anywhere until we save my son. And she wipes her eyes once more and turns back to the horde. Uh, nice. I, I like it very much. Uh, I, I think even as you turn back, Glittering Ash, you will realize that you kind of moved up. You've seen these uh, uh, undead get get struck down. Uh, you see these last few ones that are there. They're kind of moving, and 
you see them start to move it with with a lack of coordination uh like they were attacking with directed fury but they that has led up and you look around and that figure whoever was commanding them has vanished and these last four are are simple like automatons wandering free at this point <sighs> Um, if they're not being directed, I, I feel like these three could probably handle them mm -hmm. if they're, if they're, but I, there's like, we're going to a wedding and I stumble across, um, uh, 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 at least one person from my past that I know is no good and also like I have to try and at least track down this sorcerer and where he's gotten to so uh, leaving them kind of trying to, to rush forward yeah and I will and I will say uh, I, I, I think as you do as yeah. uh, like before you can even say anything you will see a group of people coming down the road oh uh, 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 rushing forward like they've heard the the uh the acclaim uh and you will see righteous jade the groom uh with some of his bodyguards uh, uh with him is a razor eyes eye uh but also with him is your master 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 Wu uh uh come rushing up uh uh, uh and master Wu sees you and looks surprised because you're not supposed to be here <laughs> you're supposed to be somewhere else Withering Ash! Master. Well, what is, what is, what's, finish these, finish these things off. Very well. <laughs> like, uh, an like, duel, I guess? Nope, I actually, I think, I think at this point, it's just, you get to just, like, what do you do? What? Oh, okay. Do, yeah, I think it narratively tells what, what that looks like as you finish them. Um, I think uh, so because because my left ankle is uh, is is broken or is is at the very least twisted or sprained. I won't say broken, but at the least out of commission. So I'm like, kind of like I, I'm fine, and I'm hobbling a little bit, uh, uh, and I will spin on my non-broken ankle as I as I whirl the the uh, meteor hammers about, um, and it kicks up. Um, uh, it kicks up. Uh, uh, all the dust and uh, and leaves, um, which uh, confu which confuses the uh, the two zombies, um, and then I'll just do a corkscrew uh, maneuver, and uh, and wrap them around a tree. They'll both just be like. <laughs> I think that that is perfect, and and kind of catch them, and the 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 can break the talismans off of their foreheads and disintegrate them. Uh, uh, Ren Jin, uh, uh, Auntie Oak, uh, uh, there, there's this bit where you'd like, you'd like to talk, like, like there's a chance for company, but, but th then there are these people there uh, and uh, uh, the, the, the groom Righteous Jade is there by you, Auntie Oak, and says, uh, 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 venerable, venerable aunt, are, are, are you, are you all, are, all right? I think she doesn't want to be seen by this group of people. Oh. She wants to go. She doesn't want to be seen, especially by Donning Joy, who's she knows her son was raised with probably as a sibling. So do and you, do you rush shame. away? Yeah, I think she. I think, yeah, I think, I think. Um... Oh, I forgot his name. Da, 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 da. Righteous Jade says that, and he's he looks towards the the monsters that are tied to this tree, and looks back to uh, Auntie Oak, and she's gone. You both, your words seem to have had their effect. Oh, Auntie you, Oak has has left. <laughs> you know, you see this, like this look of like, oh, thank God, just kind of like wash over him. Uh, he loosens back up. He he 
puts the flask and like connects it to his hip and he keeps it there and then he just with like wide open arms is like i'm so glad my friends could make it here thank you for showing up right when you were needed ah, righteous jake embraces you so good to see you uncle i, I I'm, I'm glad you are here so glad so glad uh uh, looks to you, Withering Ash, Renjin, uh, uh, honored guest, please, please f- follow me. Uh, my troops are here. We will see you safely back to the estate and you will, you will fill us in on what has happened. Is, is that all right? I think Renjin looks around for Auntie Oak because he's confused. Why would She's someone, gone. yeah, why would someone, uh, maybe I'll ask Ash that there was a woman here. And she put herself at great harm uh, for a stranger, right? Why would she do that for me? Uh, I, uh, I think uh, I think um, you distract uh, Withering Ash from trying to uh, make uh, eye contact with Razor Eyes. Uh, <laughs> uh, and so when you say there's a woman here, when you say there there's a woman here, I think I think he says yes. She's beautiful. I mean, uh, what? Uh, um, a beautiful creature. Uh, and then, uh, oh, you don't know Auntie Oak? She's, 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 you're well known. Like, I recognized you. Right, Auntie Oak? Yeah, mostly like people know her because she travels around, wanders around the province and Correct. through rumors, etc. Yeah, so I'll basically just like, uh, 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 Oh, I know. I'll I'll mention. I'll tell. I'll tell one of the stories about her that I learned when I was nice. Right. This is. She's 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 a, a local legend, and and uh, it it's interesting that uh, she stuck her neck out for someone as unworthy of it as you. Oh. <laughs> uh, that is why you're my plus one. <laughs> <laughs> and I think we'll see the, the the group now, the sort of the entourage, the train of the the three of you being led uh, up. We see the lanterns, we see the lights of the estate, and we see you being brought in with that sort of formality, that gathering. You know, the the celebration as you're brought in, Auntie Oak. Though, what do, how do you get in? Is it through the servant store? Is it over the wall? What do we see? I think the next time we see the, the the scene cuts to Auntie Oak and she's crouched sort of underneath a very tall oak tree and on top of the walls that head into this, this estate. And she's crouched there in the shadows watching this group of people as they walk in and she's kind of tossing her steel sword up and down in her hand as she contemplates the the party walking into the building. Perfect. And that is our final shot for this episode. Uh, That's where we'll take up uh, next time. Uh, uh, I would like to do a quick uh, stars and wishes. Uh, starts being things you want to call out, things you particularly liked, uh, character play, that kind of thing. Uh, and then wishes being like, we got one session. If there's like one thing you really want to hit or one or two things you like, would really like to definitely see on screen, uh, uh, like call call that out. Uh, Devin, is it okay if I start with you? Yeah. Okay. Um, I, uh, I'll give... I'll give star. Well, how's about this? I'll give stars to the two players I don't live with because. Um, I uh, Jay, I was worried uh, after I was like, "Oh, this is my story," and I really thought about it. And you're like, "Well, uh, basically, that throws all my stuff out." I felt very bad, but then I was like, "Oh, cool! I like that we're we're this like little odd couple." um, Right. Uh, and and I, I love I love that you threw that out there and I, I just ran with it. So thank you very much for that. That was the great. dynamic um, is wonderful. Yeah. Um, no, you're welcome. Uh, when as you were laying out your initial story, I'm like, man, that's my story. All of that <laughs> down to the weapons. And I'm like, oh, wow. Just pulling that out of my head. But I knew that I had two choices coming in. And so I right. fell back onto the other one. So wonderful. no, don't feel bad about it. OK. Um, and then uh, Jason, I I 
I'm so glad that you picked that because I'm like, well, you've had some terrible tragedy happen in your life. Um, and, and I don't know what it is yet. And that actually kind of goes to my, to my wish. Okay. As much as I would love to have uh, Renjin and Withering Ash like, um, like have to stare each other down because they find, I think that is like, that, that would be an okay thread to like be like, yeah, well, I guess we'll run into her next time. I would really like to like figure out what happened there. Okay. Yeah, That's, I, I would love to see that too. That's definitely on my list of thinking about what happened there. Yeah. Okay. My big wish would be that for sure. Excellent. All right. Uh, Jay. Yes. Uh, stars. Uh, uh, I think to everybody, I like how you guys are great at incorporating everyone else's stuff. Right. And that's fantastic. I love that when that happens. Right. Um, yeah, it makes for great games. I mean, we got some crazy drama happening here. So I like when that happens. Um, I'm with Devin. I, I'd like to see more of what's going on with uh, Yubo's story, right? There's some mystery there. There's some questions there. I'm intrigued. I want to know uh, how that plays out, what, what, what that is about, right? Um, I think that we do, uh, Rinjin and Withering Ash, have this odd couple thing happening, and that'll be whatever it is, but I'm intrigued in what's going on with Yubo, right? So that would awesome. be my wish too. Okay. Awesome. Uh, and then Jason? Yeah. So um, big wish for the immediate, uh, just embracing of the fantastical. Um, I, everyone was right on the same page with that. And I, I find it fun to be playing currently a character who is not yet quite fantastic. Uh, that fantasticness is their back pocket thing. Um, so that's that's a very interesting dynamic to exist in and work with. Um, but everyone did an amazing job today embracing that and flipping a cart as like the first major action, just <laughs> like flipping it and coming down with meteor uh, things in the middle of nowhere, like it, it just immediately latching onto that was fantastic. Um, wishes. Um, <clears throat> oh boy. Um, I'm definitely excited to get more auntie conflict. And I think the auntie conflict plus whatever's going on is what's going to trigger the whole like, well, guess I can't stay hidden forever and stuff is going to get wild. And um, I just, whenever it hits the fan, I am ready to get fantastical and wild with it. And I am excited to see what that climax looks like. Cause I think it's, I think it's going to be great. Awesome. Uh, and Amanda. I have a lot of the same stars. Um, Jay and Devin, this, this odd couple thing, of course, huge huge stars for it because it just it came on so naturally you just read each other so easily so well and just built on it so quickly and it was perfect I was joking in our chat um like two seconds into it I was like oh no I ship it and it's true I do um so that's that's my OTP of this game I suppose um Jason I really love this sort of like devil may care kind of guy that you you've got built here like it's just a really really interesting type of warrior um in that you can't tell where his allegiance lies really and i'm excited for when your backstory comes into play with that because it's gonna be i, I do feel like you know the shit's gonna hit the fan it's gonna be amazing <laughs> Uh, so that's, again, part of my wish to, to get more uh, Yubo backstory. I'm excited for when Renjin and Withering Ash have more than just, you know, joking at each other problems when things get serious. I'm yeah. also really looking forward to meeting the Shark Finger Princess, uh, who or what she is, and why it ends up that we are all here at this time. Because you know how in these movies and such, it, how it works is that it's every all the stories tie together right right so i'm uh i'm looking forward to that and of course more drama more drama all the drama okay 
Um, big, big stars for you, Lil. This was amazing. You have just such a great grasp of when to switch between the characters and when to focus on them and how to draw out more of the story and more of the plot, more of the character motivations. Even when we were doing the character development and the character creation, you were right on it with, oh, and how does this make this character do this? And what would it mean for this? And it was so smooth and easy. Oh. Uh, so great job on that. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, great characters for everybody. Let me second that. Uh, uh, brilliant stuff. Uh, wonderful play with each other on those entanglements. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to, to playing this out uh, and uh, revealing deep connections and getting that all into play. We, we, will, we, will, we will get a lot, uh, a lot on the table as, as much as we can uh, next time. Uh, so uh, thank you all very much. And I will see all of you uh, next Monday. Next Monday, Thanks yes. For running it. Thanks so much. Let Good me... night.